Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're going to talk about the Ice Gauntlet in Amazon's new MMO, New World. Another day, another weapon mastery guide, and we're up to part 3 already. If you're unfamiliar with the series thus far, we're going through every weapon in the Amazon MMO New World. MGN has been playing the beta extensively, and with that we've decided to put together some information and guides on every single weapon that is available in the game. That way, when the game launches, you can already be fully ready, you'll have a plan, you'll know what to do when it comes to the Ice Gauntlet. Alright, so like I mentioned, it's intelligent based, if you love wielding magic, you're gonna love wielding the Ice Gauntlet. How weapon masteries work in New World is pretty simple at first glance. Use a specific weapon type, and as you do, your character becomes more proficient wielding that weapon, and you'll unlock skills and bonuses associated with it. The devil in the details of weapon masteries is there are two different skill trees for each weapon that focus on different styles of gameplay. You won't be able to spend your points on every single skill in both trees, so picking and choosing of which options to take will define your character and make you unique against other players using your chosen weapon. And this uniqueness is taken further with your weapon choices across your second weapon slot also. Over the course of the series, we'll be looking at every weapon type that is available and how to accentuate them with your statistical decisions. So if we haven't covered your preferred weapon type yet, or you know what archetype you want your character to follow, but there isn't a guide as of yet, well fear not because I'm going to do them all. With that out of the way, let's start looking at how to get the most out of your Ice Gauntlet wielding character. Because throwing spells in New World is badass, and feeling badass is never a bad thing. Unlike the other weapons that we've covered thus far, Ice Gauntlets do not benefit from a secondary stat, so if you want to be dishing out as much damage as possible, invest solely in intelligence. Don't forget, grab a few points in constitution here and there, so you can't be one shot by mobs. There's no benefit in grabbing dexterity, uh, willpower, strength, any of that. Stick to intelligence and grab a few points in constitution. So that's where you should focus your attribute points, but as far as playstyle, you have a few different options, depending on your preferences and where you allocate your weapon mastery points. I said you have a few options because the Ice Gauntlet trees invoke pretty dramatically different playstyles depending on which tree you take. If you want to pump intelligence, uh, you want to use other int based weapons, you have Ice Gauntlets be your secondary weapon, you can focus on the crowd control effects of the rightmost tree, of the rightmost tree and that's really going to work well. The other option is to obviously have the gauntlets be your main weapon and to utilize a mixture of both trees. The leftmost being your main damage dealing potential and the rightmost will keep you alive during that damage dealing. If you don't want to manage your own CC and survivability and find yourself playing in a group more often than not and want to focus on damage, we'll just pump that leftmost tree, go to town on that all the way. You know, you can see already that you have a few different playstyle options. We're going to take a look at those skill trees that I mentioned, the leftmost being the damage focusing skill tree, and that's referred to as Ice Tempest. And the abilities found within sort of specialize in dealing heavy amounts of ice damage, pushing foes away from your squishy maid shelf. The rightmost tree is referred to as Builder, and as the name sort of suggests, this tree focuses on building. Specifically, building a totem that will attack, buff, debuff, provide some CC, you get the idea. We're going to take a look at the active abilities of the Ice Tempest skill tree first, go through the augments there, then swap over to the Builder tree, and then go through the passives. So without further ado, Ice Tempest. The first active skill is called Ice Spikes. Creates a trail of icicle spikes that go out in a straight line for 8 meters, dealing 56% weapon damage along the way. The last icicle will be a mighty spike that deals 157% weapon damage and pushes the enemy away if they live. The skill can be activated during the casting of the path to cause the path to end early and spawn the mighty spike where the player has kicked. It costs 15 mana and the cooldown is 10 seconds. You can augment ice spikes with refreshing spikes. Cooldown for this ability decreased by 10% if an enemy is hit by the major spike. Then there's empowered spikes. Mighty spike damage is increased by 20% when hitting an enemy that's below 30% health. Then deadly path. Increased path damage by 10% and adds a stagger effect to those hit by the path. Then there is spiky reach. Ice shards fire from the sides of the mighty spark. Each shard has a range of 6 meters and will deal 118% weapon damage. The second active skill for Ice Tempest is called Ice Storm. A ranged attack that deals 17% weapon damage every 0.25 seconds and slows enemies within a 5 meter radius of the AoE. 
It lasts for 5 seconds with a 20 meter range and slows by 25%. The cost is 25 mana and the cooldown is 20 seconds. The first augment for Ice Storm is called Weakening Gust. Incoming damage is increased by 10% for all enemies affected by the Ice Storm who are below 50% health and that effect lasts for 3 seconds. The next is called Storm Summoner. Ice Storm mana cost is reduced by 8% if cast when at full mana. And the last is called Punishing Storm. Increased damage output by 10% for each enemy caught in your Ice Storm. Third active skill for Ice Tempest and the last is called Wind Chill. An aimed blast that sends a column of freezing wind, pushes back enemies by 5 meters and dealing 16% damage with each hit. Has a max range of 7 meters with the last 2 meters dealing an extra 20% more damage but those won't push enemies away. The cost is 20 mana and the cooldown is 15 seconds. The first augment for Wind Chill is called Enduring Chill. Increases the duration of Wind Chill by 1 second. The second augment for Wind Chill is called Chilling Blast. Increase the bonus damage of the last 2 meters of Wind Chill by an extra 25%. That's the actives for Ice Tempest. Now we're going to swap over to the right side. This is for the Builder Tree. The first Builder active skill is called Ice Pylon. Places an ice pylon that fires ice projectiles, dealing 50% weapon damage at enemies within a 20 meter radius for 15 seconds or until it's killed. Summoning an ice pylon creates an AoE radius of 1 meter around the pylon that enables frost powers. The cost is 15 mana and the cooldown is 10 seconds. The frost pylon augments, the first being greater pylon, increase the damage of the ice pylon to slow targets by 10%. The next is called Pylon Regen. Ice Pylon regenerates to full health after not attacking for 5 seconds. The next is Pylon Dodge. Dodging an attack while at full stamina will increase the Ice Pylon's rate of fire for 3 seconds. The next is Pylon Refresh. A successful attack extends the Pylon's lifetime by 1 second. The next is called Ultimate Frost. Double the health of your Ice Pylon and extend its AoE with Frost Circle by 5 meters. Standing in the AoE doubles the bonuses of Quick Frost and Empowered Frost attacks. The second active skill under the Builder skill tree is called Ice Shower. Summon a shower of ice that creates a frosted AoE of 1 by 5 meters that lasts 4 seconds. Enemies that enter this AoE will be stricken with Frostbite, rooting them in place for 1 second and making them unable to sprint or dodge. Entering the AoE will also slow the target by 50% and the slow will last for 3 more seconds after the enemy leaves the Ice Shower effect. This costs 25 mana, has a 20 second cooldown and it comes with a few augments. The first being Enduring Shower, increases the shower duration to 7 seconds. The next is Quick Shower, any allied character, including yourself, will gain a 25% speed boost for 2 seconds when entering the Ice Shower. The third is called Frigid Shower. Frostbite also applies Rend to foes who enter, reducing their defense by 10%. The third and last active skill for the Builder tree on the right is called Entombed. Enter an Entombed state and become impervious to damage and quickly regen your mana. Last 10 seconds, and but it can be destroyed by enemy attacks. You can click to end the Ice Tomb early with your right and will allow for the pilot to move quickly afterwards. This method costs no mana. The left click one does cost mana and causes damage and knockback on leaving the ice tomb. That cost is 20 mana. The skills cost in general is 10 mana and has a 30 second cooldown. The first augment for Entombed is Strengthened Entomb. Increased defense by 25% for 3 seconds after breaking out of the ice tomb. And the second is called Cleansing Tomb. Remove all debuffs when you cast Entomb. Now we're going to go through the passives. These are skills that you don't have to activate. They won't appear in your quick toolbar down the bottom. They are just passively there once you select them. The first is Cold Reach. Increase damage of light and heavy attacks by 15% against targets more than 15 meters away. The second is called Energized Critical. Increase critical hit damage of ice spells by 15% when you're at full stamina. Heavy Freeze. Heavy attacks will freeze the target if hit inside an ice storm or with frostbite for one second. The next is called Critical Rejuvenation. Recover 15 mana after triggering a critical hit, but it will not provide over mana, you will just hit your cap. The next is Gathering Storm. Hitting three light attacks in a row grants 15 mana. The next is Critical Frost. Increase critical hit chance if hitting an enemy inside your frosted area 
or while they have frostbite. Crit chance is increased by 20% when these effects occur. Then next is ultimate chill. Ice abilities chill their targets, increasing the damage taken from further ice attacks by 35% for 3 seconds. The next is blocking stamina. Blocking with the ice gauntlet will convert mana to stamina when hit, 3 mana to 15 stamina. The next is frozen touch. Slow enemies by 25% for 2 seconds when they connect with a melee attack against you while you're at 100% health. The next is Defiant Freeze. Casting any ice ability will create over you an ice hardened layer, granting 20% fortification for 2 seconds. The next is Quick Frost. Increase movement speed by 10% whilst you're inside your frosted area. The next is Empowered Frost. Regain 3 mana with each spell cast whilst inside a frosted area. Then the last one we're talking is Refreshing Frost. Reduce cooldown of all skills by 20% when casting an ability whilst you're inside your frosted area. That's going to wrap things up for our overview of the Ice Gauntlet Mastery in Amazon's new MMO, New World. We hope you found the information useful, planning out your Ice Gauntlet character, and we hope to see you online. If you have any suggestions or comments, we'd love to hear from you on the MGN.gg blog, our YouTube channel of course, the new MGN Twitter, at MGN underscore TV, and Discord. As usual, links for all these can be found in the description of the video overview, and we'll see you in the new world.